Since I discovered the show, I have watched basically every Movies with Mikey the day it came out. Except one. It's been nearly a year since his video on Blade Runner 2049 came out, and until today I had not seen it. Because I needed time. And I want to explain why. Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies I had barely seen. I love cyberpunk, and so much of the visual language that formed around what had been a solely literary genre springs directly from this film. The genre lives in the shadow of this movie on a level that is staggering. But it has a complicated history. In my life, until very recently, I had seen Blade Runner exactly once. The seemingly endless drama of recut after recut, scarce availability, and the simple question of which was even the true version of the film made it hard to actually watch. Blade Runner had transitioned almost to legend. This film, which had utterly defined a genre in a way few films ever had, felt at times like a lost work. We had only this or that rough attempt to recover the original whole, much like another seminal sci-fi film, Metropolis. An entire genre, visually tied to the impact of a work that was as much ideal as real. And then they announced a sequel. To describe my reaction as skeptical would be to insult the reader's intelligence. The entire idea seemed absolutely farce. What could live up to that? In the intervening three decades, Blade Runner had become more than a film, but one of our cultural myths. What that film meant had changed, and I felt certain it could not be the same. But something else had changed, too, in those 35 years. Me. On September 15th, 2017, I introduced myself to the world as a woman for the first time. I was finally living as the real me, at last, after 35 years of not knowing who I even was. Mere days before the premiere of Blade Runner 2049, I scheduled my first appointment with the gender clinic. And this was the context in which I sat down and rewatched the original Blade Runner in gorgeous, high-definition widescreen for the first time. The context in which, two weeks later, I sat down in the theater to watch Blade Runner 2049. My Facebook post reads only, Excitement. There was not another post to follow. I have tried, in the last two years, many times to put into words how I felt about that movie. But every time I sat at the keyboard, I felt bereft. I still struggle now as I write this, as I speak this, to explain why this movie wrecked me for weeks. I could not place my emotions about the film because I could not yet reconcile them. And when I did, the feeling was overpowering, so overpowering that it robbed me of my words. This was one of the most incredible films I had ever seen, a masterpiece. But what it had left me was grief. Mikey Newman's video is a beautiful encapsulation of so many of the central questions of this film. He is right about everything, as always. But there's one question the film asked that I can't fault him for missing. Can you be said to be human if you can't bear a child? This is the question behind Deckard and Rachel in this film. Behind their child, behind the other bioengineered human's fascination with that child, 
and also their determination to fight on. Behind Joy and Kay's relationship and what it means in a world where nothing is real. And that question was the core of my grief. Because I am a trans woman in a nation that sterilizes trans people on a transition path that would inevitably remove that ability in any case, who never wanted kids but now had to confront what that choice meant for my identity. This is why I walked out of the theater unable to speak. Why I cried for days when I wasn't numb with shock. Why even a year later, I could not bring myself to watch my favorite show and relive that realization again. Blade Runner 2049 was the day I mourned my motherhood. What Mikey's essay crystallizes for me, however, is that the film does answer the question. Can you be human? Can you be real without bearing children? Yes. There could be no other answer. Are the other bioengineered humans struggling to survive any less real, any less motivated to fight for lack of being able to bear a child? Is Joy's love of Kay any less real because she is a digital being, unable even to truly touch him? Of course they are human. Because over and over, they show the one thing that makes us humans great. The one thing that makes any of this existence worth a damn. They can do the best thing that human beings can do for one another. They can love. Blade Runner 2049 raises the question of child raising because it is fundamentally a question we have confused for a deeper one. We have confused the biological mechanics for the deeper question of our capacity for compassion. The true question is, how can you not be human if you can love? And we... We on the margins, rejected, mistreated, oppressed, beaten, broken. Our realities denied, our identities denied, our humanity denied, again and again. Still we walk this earth, and we love. Despite every reason not to, we love. We love each other. We love ourselves. When I sat for my first appointment with the endocrinologist to begin HRT, I was asked if I wished to freeze sperm. I declined. I am done mourning. Let state or time or biology take it. This isn't what makes me human. It is my love that makes me human. And it is boundless. Thank you.